everyone! Happy Friday! Thanks for joining me for a craft night with friends. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners. And I'm here every weeknight, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. So thanks so much for joining me. We are hopefully going to finish up our inchworm embroidery tonight. Uh, let's get going right away, and I, th I think we can do it. We'll see. All right, hello, hello, everyone. Okay, let's get going. Uh, we got a little further than I thought we would last night. We actually were able to start the outline of, of this feller, so I'm actually hoping that we can finish the whole thing uh, within the hour here that I'm on. So um, first up, we're gonna finish that outline and uh, do his little face, and then we will get these eyes. This is the part that I'm not quite sure we'll get done today, but let's see. And I think I used up all of my scrappy little green bits. Yeah, yeah, I used those up yesterday. So we have to get in a fresh piece today. Pretty sure we'll use this later as well. So I'm gonna, I'm not worried about getting too much here, but I'm doing about 24 inches, my normal amount here. Boop. Okay. Let's get our three strands. Oh man, my hands are peeling. I, over the weekend, um, I was visiting my parents and my brothers and uh, we played a lot of like bag toss and uh, we were using like regulation size bags that mom made and uh, it gave me like blisters all over my hands, I think. I don't know. I don't know why that would be, but I can't think of anything else that it would be from. <laughs> but now I have like calluses all over my hands. All right. Three strands. Hope everyone is having a lovely Friday. Oh, Gretchen says he is so adorable. Thanks so much. I am loving how he's turning out with his little rainbows everywhere. Uh, I think the satin stitch turned out awesome. We finished the satin stitch on the inchworm yesterday. We did about half of the blue and all of that purple, and it is nice and shiny. You can see it reflect the light really nicely, I think. Uh, especially like the blue, you can see that shift in the in the light. I love that effect with satin stitch. It's subtle, but I like it. All right, I'm gonna weave into the backs of my stitches here, and then we will finish up that back stitch. And I might actually even do the sewing method today for stitching, which I don't normally do. It's not my go-to just because I didn't learn that way. But I have been practicing it because it is faster and I'm going for speed tonight because I want to finish th this tonight and not have to uh, work on it next week. Uh, next week we're actually going to be starting the jellyfish. Where did he run off to? Somewhere. Here we are. So this will be this will be next week's stitching, little jellyfish. So I want to make sure that <laughs> I can get this guy done. I know we didn't. I wasn't here on Monday, so it's taking a little bit longer. Hey Nicole, hope all is doing well with you. All right. So uh, uh, sewing method versus stabbing method of embroidery. So I'm gonna do the stabbing method first. Again, this is how I learned. And uh, um, so it's kind of just my natural go-to. So stabbing method is when you, I'm doing the back stitch, um, but the method of embroidery is I'm coming all the way up and then going all the way down and all the way up. I'm doing that with each, each stitch. So let me just get past these satin stitches. So this, like I said, is my go-to. I think you can get really accurate stitches because you're going straight down with the needle. Uh, so that's that's nice. And uh, a, a little bit more, I think, than the sewing method. But I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm practicing that. All right, so the sewing method, instead of going all the way down and all the way up, uh, for the sewing method, I'm going to go one more stitch just to get past this this satin stitch. The sewing method, you go in and out in the same motion. So you're kind of going in sideways and coming up sideways. Uh, so, and I actually like my, 
fabric a little looser in the hoop for that. So I'm just going to kind of push it down. That's going to loosen it up. Uh, so my, my fabric's not so tight. So the sewing method is when, oh, I thought I had a little knot. Let's get that out. Felt funny on the back. Boop. All right. So sewing method, you go into the stitch and then you come out for the beginning of your next stitch all in the same motion. So you're not really even pulling the thread to the back. It's just like coming up right away. Let's do another one. There we go. So it almost goes actually like twice as fast uh, to almost than the stabbing method. And I think there's less knots on the back. Uh, it's really kind of smooth. Uh, I do like it. I just kind of, I kind of wish I learned this way because I would have been stitching all these guys so much faster, I think. And I'd probably be more accurate. Um, I do get more accuracy in coming up uh, with the looser fabric, but then you just have, to, just have to make sure that you don't like pull too tight so it doesn't bunch. Um, I think I'm still more accurate with the stabbing method though. But this does go so quickly. So like I said, I think we're gonna we're gonna practice this method today just so I can get this done faster because uh, I, I want to be able to finish today and I know uh, satin stitch on those eyes are gonna take take some time. Uh, so for the for the sewing method, I can really me personally only go like from right to left. So I got to keep rotating my embroidery, whereas with the stabbing method, I can just kind of keep my embroidery in place and I don't have to rotate it or anything in my hand at all. So we're going speedy today. Oh, you guys, I, I uh, forgot to mention, uh, we are doing a mystery gift again today. So $20 or more spent in the shop during our live and I will throw in a free mystery gift for you guys. Uh, and no code necessary or anything. Um, I'll just see who ordered during this time. Uh, I'm here for an hour um, and I will pop in a mystery gift for you. All right, so I'm gonna just do the stabbing method again to show you again and I think it'll be easier for me to go around this tight little curve. Oh, M Mishka says, uh, my daughter and I are loving this. Oh, I'm so happy you're, you guys are here. We are just chilling for about an hour here. I just got on at like 8.30 central time. So I've only been on for like a few minutes here. And I'm really shooting on getting this done today, which I was not really expecting to do. But we were cruising yesterday, so I think I think we'll get it done. Oh, and ask, are we still going to do the whipped back stitch? Um, so right now we're do just doing a plain back stitch, and we had talked about doing a whipped back stitch on him, and I'd still kind of like to do that. So we'll just we'll try and finish it um, as is first. So I'll I'll get the rest of his body done, then the face, and then we'll do the satin stitch for the eye and. Uh, if there's any time left, I will start a whipped back stitch on them because I think that would be really, really cute yet. Um, a whipped back stitch, let's see, I have an example. We did it, we did that for the giraffe. So for the giraffe, um, here's, we have him done. We just, uh, we're waiting to quilt him. But the whipped back stitch is where we do a back stitch first and then we take another color thread or the same color thread and you go around and around each little stitch. And it almost looks like baker's twine, I think, if you use a different color. Or it looks like just like a little piece of string that's just resting on top of the fabric. So it's kind of a cool effect that I, I feel like doesn't even look like back stitch anymore. Uh, but anyway, so that's... That's what we were kind of talking about of going, you know, this back stitch that we're doing now, we could go all the way around the edge or all the way around, around it with that whipped back stitch. And that would just be really cute, I think, especially with a different color. Like we could use the dark green maybe, and that would bring in some of the, uh, you know, a darker outline, which I think might be pretty. But yeah, so I, I do still want to do that. And um, if not, if not today, like if we don't get that far today, we'll do it, uh, after we stitch the jellyfish next week. We'll, cause I don't think he's going to take more than a few days. So we'll, 
stitch the jellyfish, and then we will uh, do that whip back stitch if we don't get it going tonight. Like I said, I'm trying to go super duper speed tonight. Oh, thanks, Mishka. I'm trying to go super fast tonight so we can get that far. Like I said, this is like bonus for me because I was not expecting uh, to be this far today, but we were cruising the past few days. Uh-oh, I'm stuck again. Oh, no, we're fine. All right, I can get maybe two more stitches out of here, and then we'll weave in the end, and we'll start up another piece of green. Yeah, we'll, we'll get one more here. All right, and I'll finish the stitch by going straight down to the back. All right, and now I'm going to flip it around, and I like weaving in all my ends versus tying knots. I weave in the ends at the beginning as well. Uh, I just find that when I start with a knot, it is fast and easy and everything to start with a knot, but I always get my thread caught on it when I'm stitching. Or I pull those little itty bitty like threads from the from the knot, like you have the knot and then like your little ends. I accidentally pull those to the front so they, they're, you know, poking out on the front and that just drives me crazy. Uh, so by weaving in the ends, I've kind of eliminated all of that, and I can snip snip the thread really close to the edge. Throw my little mini garbage here. Uh, so I, I like weaving in those ends. It's cute from the back. I like the bold line of the green on the back. Uh, actually, kind of more so from the front. So I'm wondering if we should have done a like a a. Um, a uh, stem stitch would have given us the effect, but I think if we do that whipped stitch, uh, we'll be good. We'll, we'll get that effect a little bit. So here's my other uh, three strands. So I'm using three strands for these outlines. I used two for the satin stitch, so we could get that like side-by-side -side thread um, look, so it looks like single threads next to each other. Uh, but now I've switched to three strands just so we could have a little thicker line. Uh, so this is the other half of the, it, it starts with six strands of embroidery thread, and then I, I separated it into two groups of three. We should make the jellyfish huge and use it on the back of your quilt. Oh my god, that would be so cute, Gretchen. I have never done, so I love doing those big, big versions of these embroideries. Uh, you know, like my hedgehog in my, um behind me here in my workspace. Uh, I've done that with the hedgehog, I think twice, made it really big, and I've done it with the alligator and made him in a pillow, into a pillow, and the, oh, I think I made the, I forgot I had done this, but when I cleaned all my crafts up, I found it. I did the monkey and made him into like a little baby wall hanging quilt, and then I've made the, um, the lion large as well and turn him into a pillow but i've never done the jellyfish before and ugh, i would love that he's one of my favorites oh riz forosi riz forosi sorry it takes me a while to get everyone's names i learned quite a bit in just a few seconds thank you oh that's awesome oh mishka says or Mish, Mishka says, uh, we love these little hacks. Oh, we're beginners. It's so, so helpful. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. And I'm here every uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. We do tons of embroidery. The last couple of weeks of the month, we, um, we play around with random crafts, too. I like all crafts. <laughs> uh, but during, during the first couple of weeks, we've been working on a bunch of embroidery. So I am more than happy to ask or to, to answer any embroidery questions or any other craft, really. I might know something, or someone here might know something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, even if it's not like what we're stitching right now or whatever, I'm more than happy to answer questions. So this is getting really kind of spinny, so I'm just going to let this dangle. I find that when I do that sewing method where I go in and out in the same motion, my thread does get a little more twisty. I think there's just like a lot more friction on it from the fabric. I think that's kind of what it does. And I and I basically keep on like rotating, like my my needle's not moving, it's staying in the same place, so I feel like I'm maybe twisting, adding another twist with each stitch. I'm not quite sure, but I feel like I get, get a little bit more twisties when I do 
this sewing method, which again is the in and out in one session. And actually, I'm going to finish this up with the stabbing method. It's the stabbing method is where you go all the way down and then all the way up in two separate motions. Um, I do have to be more active on the back, like I have my my finger here kind of keeping the threads away from each other and stuff so I don't get knots. I have a more active, more active backhand, I suppose, with the stabbing method. But it is still um, more accurate for me. Uh, so I like going around all these like small little tight spaces with it. All right, we almost have his outline done. So we'll do his eyes and mouth real quick. I don't remember what the original color we used for that. I'll have to get the pattern out again here. Um, but we can pick whatever colors we want for his eyes and face. I kind of want to give him like little pink lips. But we'll see. Let's let's look at the original first. All right, last stitch of the green. Cute. So let's uh, let's weave in the end. So I always go three times. That third time is kind of what locks it in. It's, it's not going anywhere. You're basically kind of making a long knot, I feel like. Oops, missed one. Boop. Okay, so I'll save this little piece in case we need to do a few little stitches on another project. Um, actually, we might, I don't know what color we'll do the eyes yet, but maybe it'll be that same green. I don't know. All right, let's grab the pattern again, just because I haven't looked at it in a little while. Oh, we did a little green mouth. That's kind of cute. And little black eyes. Uh, we could do something similar. I do kind of like the idea of a little pink mouth. Do I have any of that bright pink as a scrap? Yeah, we do. Ooh, and this is just the right amount. Should we do a little pink mouth? I kind of like that. Pink mouth, and we might have some black in here yet. I, I, I do kind of like the black for the eyes. So this is, you know, I have I have all my thread wound for this project on these little bobbins, but as I use them, you know, I'm keeping all the little bits. So that's that's my little mass of crazy here, my little cloud, <laughs> uh, cloud of floss. Um, so I'm, I am trying to pick out of there when I can. All right, let's do this, the pink and the black. Quick decisions tonight, I, I like it. Um, all right. Ooh, I missed a uh, missed a comment. Oh, Linda, what a great idea. Oh, a large jellyfish on the ooh on a beach bag, just saying so cute. Ooh, yes, we could make like a cute like a big tote bag, like a really big tote bag that could have like towels and stuff in, and then um, do the big jellyfish. That'd be really cute. All right, I'm going to do that way of starting. We've done this a few times before. I don't do it all that often, but <laughs> I've kind of done it more. When I'm feeling lazy, then I, then I do this. But um, it's not really laziness, though. I don't know why I say that. But uh, I'm going to stitch this with a back stitch. But I'm going to actually leave an end out to make my last stitch and to weave in later since I, I don't want to I don't want to weave in to the backs of these stitches because I don't want to have like this jump that you can see. So I think this will make sense in a sec. So let's, how many stitches? I, we're going to do this in three. Well, in the, in the original, I did it in four stitches. Let's do that. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave a little bit of thread hanging out here, enough to make that last stitch, or the first stitch, really, and then weave in the end. So I'm just going to leave it right there. I'm going to throw my thumb on there, and let's do a couple more stitches here. This is a suggestion from, I think, someone over on on YouTube a few weeks ago and or maybe a couple months ago now and I've been <laughs> using it a lot lately. I mean it does get in the way sometimes to have all these little ends hanging out but sometimes it's just fast and easy and I like it. Okay I like this little pink mouth. It's really cute. Okay weave in the end. Not much to weave in here but we're still doing it. One to try to get as many different threads as possible. Three. A little hard to do when you're in such a small space. Boop. Uh, missed again. There. And now I can go to the front, grab this thread, and 
finish that first stitch. There, <laughs> he's cute. All right, and then now we can weave in that end as well. He's a happy little inchworm. Happy little caterpillar guy. Good enough. So I'm going to do the same thing for the eyes because, again, I don't want to, like, see, like, jumping from here to there. I don't want to see the little, um, I don't want to see that jump of floss. Like, if I, if I hold this up to the light or something, if I just lay this on the back, you can kind of see that thread through. And I don't want to see that. That's why I'm only stitching um, in that little area um, without jumping. Now, I don't always do that. Um, sometimes, you know. That's just too much work. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, you can you can put like more than one fabric on the back. Like if I layer, if I did like two layers of this fabric, then you might not see it as well. And I know people put like some stabilizer behind there sometimes to do the same thing. But eh, I'll just do this little method of weaving in. Okay, so this has, this is my black. It has three strands already because I'm, I'm a scrap again. Oh, Abigail says, I love that stitching move. <laughs> it is, it is nice. Just, I mean, like I said, if you're stitching a whole big piece and you have that little dangly edge out, that gets kind of annoying. And in that case, I'll do an away knot, which is, we did that last night. I'll do that when we do the eye, show you the away knot. It's basically doing the same thing. It's reserving a piece of floss for later. I'm like, this is me reserving a piece of floss, uh, an invisible floss. All right, let's do that again. Uh, let's see. So for, for these little circles, I like doing, so I'm going to let this just hang out there. <laughs> it's going to look like he's like got laser eyes, but I am just going to do a hexagon shape. I think a hexagon shape always looks nice, uh, when you're trying to do a circle. Cause you know, when you're embroidering, you're always, you're making a, you know, curves out of a bunch of straight lines. Like all of these stitches are straight lines, but depending on how close they are and how small they are uh, next to each other, um, they appear, it appears like a curve when in reality it's just a bunch of straight lines. So with, ooh, this is kind of goofy already, but with, um, oh, I'm doing this really awkwardly. Hold on. <laughs> so with, uh, with, I think I didn't come down in the same spot. All right, with, with the eyes, I like, with these little small circles, I like the hexagon shape because that's kind of what's giving me that curved look. If I just did like four stitches instead of six, it would look more like um, a diamond, I think. So I think this hexagon is what does it, even though I'm using like itty bitty stitches. I still like, still like doing the hexagon. Sometimes I'll do the diamond shape. Oh, Amy says hi from the campground. Nice. Hopefully it's nice weather. All right. So that's all I need to do for his eye, because remember, we're saving this piece to be the, the last little stitch. So I, I need, I can leave like a stitch and I'll weave in the ends again. One. Ooh, that's tight. Two. Three. Always three. Uh-oh. There we go. And I'm actually gonna just leave that last stitch until I'm done with this second eye. I might as well just, since I have the thread on the needle, or the, yeah, the thread and the needle still, I'm gonna just quick do the same thing here. And then we'll, oh, whoops, wrong side. Gotta come from the front to do this. <laughs> we'll just leave that other, like, laser eye out. Do our few little stitches. And then we'll weave in both of those ends. All right, 
we're coming. We're not even at halfway done yet, and and uh, I um, I'm gonna be done with. Uh, I'm just gonna have like the the two letter eyes left soon. So cruising tonight. I, I I'm hoping to finish. Like I said uh, earlier, I'm hoping to finish um, this whole thing tonight, except for maybe that whipped back stitch that we're gonna do around his body. Even though that goes pretty quickly, but. Um, that we might not have quite done because the satin stitch might take some time. Although I suppose it depends what direction we go with the satin stitch. We could go like really tall stitches because I mean these are really long stitches so there's no reason we couldn't do like super tall stitches. We just go all of them tall stitches. That would be different. I haven't done that ever on, on this design before. That would be a way of getting it done faster. I don't always like big satin stitches. Oh, we got another knot here. Come out, there we go. Um, but we already set the precedent already with big satin stitches with these these um, colorful stripes because those you know have pretty long satin stitches. So it would just be kind of doing the same thing and they'd go a lot faster which means we might get that done faster and get um, the whipped back stitch done tonight. So I think maybe that's a good idea. All right, laser eyes, let's finish those stitches and tuck them in. Hey, Veronica. All right, threading that needle. Get that last stitch, there we go, and weave in that to the back as well. I know I'm like, <laughs> if I sound like totally crazy and frantic today, it's because I am trying to go super fast and so I can finish this. This is, this is a little less chill, uh, my speed <laughs> of stitching tonight. And I'm sure there's people that can stitch like way faster and everything, but I feel like I'm, I'm in a little bit of a race tonight. A little garbage. I love these little strawberry trays, so cute. All right, let's get uh, the rest of this. Uh, am I doing the alphabet? I sure am. Uh, here's the letter G. We got the letter H. <laughs> I got a whole batch of them. I'm already kind of quilting them as well. Um, but yeah, we're going in order. So I do one letter a week and we're only working it on the first two weeks of the month. So, um, so next week we'll be doing the letter J and then we'll wait till next month and then we'll do the next couple letters. But yeah, so I'm thinking it's going to be like a whole dang year. Actually, no, it's going to be like a, it'll be like next spring by the time we finish this. Um, so he's turning out so sweet. Uh, and the, keeping the back clean like this, uh, it really, I started to have more clean like super duper clean backs like this when I started weaving in my ends like what I'm doing now like instead of tying a knot I'm, I'm weaving in the ends and I think the reason they just ended up being cleaner I mean that's one of the reasons I have another reason too but oh I think it just ended up being cleaner because my thread like if there's a knot right here my thread can't accidentally catch on it right um, because there's nothing to catch on. All my ends are totally woven in. Uh, and also I don't have those little, you know, like, you know, I don't have, I don't have like these little bits hanging out anywhere. Um, because when I weave in three times, I can, I can trim them right, right to the edge of the stitches there. And uh, so that helps me keep like all those little fuzzles from being everywhere on the back. Uh, the other thing is I try and uh, when I'm going like from one color to the next, I try and travel in the backs of the stitches to get there because as long as I can stay in the backs of the stitches, then you won't see a bunch of jumps all over the place. And the same like here, I'm just trying to stay in that little spot versus jumping like from this eye to this eye so I won't have that line there. I don't always do that. Um, I think this is excessively <laughs> clean tonight uh, by keeping it... I'm all isolated like that. But uh, really, once I started weaving in the ends, that was, I think, the big thing um, where I started to have, like, a lot cleaner uh, cleaner backs. 
All right, I think I'm gonna do this eye the same color. Wait, red, orange, yellow, green. Oh, we didn't do green. Oh, that's kind of this. So, okay, so I do, I think I do like the idea of keeping this green. Do we have some extra? Oh, just a little bit. Um, I wanna do this with uh, two strands again though, uh, kind of how we were doing that. But I think I am gonna go for the long stitches, like how, how these are like long. Uh, they're about, you know, three quarters of an inch, some of these. So this it doesn't seem like too weird. Normally I would have I I'd go satin stitch the short way. So that's kind of like here the original one I just did the short way. But I think I'm gonna go the long way. So long horizontals. These will be tall. Same with this will be tall. And then you know we'll just do a little eye there. So I'm gonna actually take my pencil here. I'm not even sure I need any guidelines for this because everything's so close together. So I'm gonna just draw a guide here and here. So I will do just like long stitches going in this direction and then I will go and do long stitches in this direction and then same thing down here. And then these ones I'll go long this way and then, you know, those will just be little shorties up there. All right. Ooh, I have family coming this weekend. Uh, we're gonna go to craft fairs and just walk around and I think have a campfire, hopefully. Um, I'm, I'm excited. It's gonna be nice. Oh, what kind of pen do I use? I mean, I'm just, this is just a pencil. This is just a mechanical pencil. Uh, this originally is an iron-on transfer, uh, so it came with the original pattern. So th this is a, I'm, I'm stitching this whole alphabet. This is an alphabet that I designed about 10 years ago and we've never stitched it live. And um, so we're finally making it into a project. So these are uh, patterns that come with an iron on transfer. This is the transfer that we used. Uh, you can use it like five times or so. So we've ironed that on um, to start out with. Uh, otherwise, it comes with like a traceable pattern too. So it's just the other direction and then you can just trace right through. That's when I'm tracing. I just, I usually just trace with a mechanical pencil. It's, it's totally nothing special. Um, I figure I'm going over the stitches and it'll kind of rub off after a little. Otherwise, I'll use a water sol soluble um, marker. But in this case, I know I'm going to cover these up, so I'm not too worried. All right, I'm gonna get two strands for this again, and I'll show you that railroad method that we did um, for the rest of the satin stitches. And you do that with like a two strand, or an even number of strands really, but two strands. And so I'm, I'm isolating the one strand and I just pull it on out. All right, set that aside. Let's get these two strands back together. All right, so you know how we just like left a strand of thread out here um, for the eyes, kind of reserving that thread to weave in later since there wasn't any like backs of stitches to weave in. I'm gonna do that same thing here, but a little different. Um, this is called the away knot. Um, we've, we've done this here before for sure. It's a go-to favorite <laughs> for starting, uh, but it's basically accomplishing the same thing. We're we're uh, basically reserving a piece of thread for later. So I'm just gonna, oh shoot, I lost, lost my needle. But I'm just tying a knot at the end here. Let's re-thread. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to bring the thread from the front to the back about four inches away from my starting point. All right. And let's, let's just start right here. I'm gonna go down to the top here. And actually, let's just do that railroad thing. Well, first of all, um, you can see the threads right there. So that's what's, what I'm reserving for later. That's my floss I'm reserving to weave in for later. Um, what stitch do you think is the most difficult stitch to do? Oh, gosh. I mean, as far as basic stitches go, You know, it all depends. <laughs> For me, the hardest one was the stem stitch. But I think the reason for that is because I was doing the stabbing method instead of the sewing method. Um, 
Uh, otherwise, I think maybe, I think this satin stitch is a little tricky, but with practice, you definitely get better and better. Uh, I do, uh, if anyone's interested in learning, uh, learning like, um, I have like 14 basic stitches that I use a lot. I have a free embroidery pattern. It's the stitching raccoon pattern. Uh, it's in my profile link. Um, and that comes with, uh, you get emailed to you a video every day of um, 14 different stitches. Um, and, and it's actually on our blog too. We have a, or a stitch library. And I have a link to that in my profile too, the stitch library. So there's blog posts for all those 14 stitches with really short, um, clear videos and uh, um, photo how to's and stuff too. So um, I, Recommend looking at those, and you know, I'm more happy to demo stitches and stuff here too. So right now I'm doing this satin stitch. I'm trying not to pull too tight because I am doing these long stitches. I don't want to pull my fabric. Uh, but you, you might notice I'm doing a thing where I'm kind of splitting the thread. Like I have two, two strands of thread and I'm kind of putting my needle right in the middle of them. Uh, and that's called railroading. I'm, I'm doing like railroading the stitches basically. And then I'm going to go across. And when I pull my thread through like those two threads, because I put my needle through that railroad technique, it should look as if, there, if there's one strand next to each other. So instead of like two strands that are twisted all up, they're um, two single strands next to each other just laying nice and flat. So it gives the impression that you're actually stitching with one thread for your satin stitch, which takes forever, but it looks, when you stitch with one thread, but it looks like super clean and shiny and nice. So we're kind of cheating, cheating that a little bit by doing the two strands and doing the railroad. All right. Last stitch here, and then I'm going to just jump up to the um, this top area. Let's let's just start at the bottom. Ooh, I kind of feel like I got to turn my work a little bit. I'm not used to working side to side. Eh, we're going to give it a go. All right, going all the way across, then back to the original side. With satin stitch, you always go back to the original side. It, it uses up a bunch of floss, but you know. That's what it's there for. And usually I, I draw in like little guide marks so I can keep my stitches all parallel, but these spaces are small enough that I, I don't feel like I need to draw in markings. Like if you were here um, earlier in the week, uh, you saw, you could see that I, I drew tons of markings along these edges and then stitched those first. So I had spaces about this big that I was going in between. And that was just to keep, um, keep these stitches as parallel to each other as I could. But like I said, with, with this little space here, I think I can manage. Um, I think this might be my last stitch and then I'll have to get more, more floss. All right, let's weave in that end. So I'm just gonna kind of grab whatever threads I can on the back. Two. I'm, I'm also not trying to pull too hard um, when I do this, because I don't want to distort the stitches on the front. Boop. All right, toss that in the road garbage. And now I'm going to take care of this away knot. So I'm going to snip that. And uh, that's just like how we did with the eyes, basically. I'm reserving that floss uh, to weave in. And I'm going to weave that in right now. Get that threaded. There we go. Oh, that's why there's a little funny knot at the end there. When did that happen? There we go. All right, so weave in this end as well, and then we can get a new piece of thread and get going. We'll probably, this will probably use up a whole nother piece of thread and then I'll need more for that small letter I. Boop. Oh, 
Noemi says, I'm going to embroider the cuff uh, for some pillowcases. Oh, uh, fun. You could do a wrapped, oh, spoke wheel for the dot. Um, gosh, I haven't done one of those in a long time. I think I'm going to keep it to satin stitch, but actually I, I'm, I am sort of working on a design. I haven't drawn it yet, but, but I have the wagon wheel, um, like a wrapped spoke wagon wheel um, flower sort of in mind for for a uh, um, embroidery of the month. So that's a, kill, a clue for uh, an embroidery of the month that'll come months from now that I haven't drawn yet. <laughs> but it, it'll have like some wagon wheel uh, flowers on it. I think it'll just be really pretty. Theoretical. It's a theoretical <laughs> design right now because I haven't drawn anything yet. All I know is that I want to do some wagon wheels for, um, for a design. Okay. So, uh, I'm, I don't have to do, I don't have to do that like reserve of a thread or that away knot for this piece now because I, I already have stitches here and I can just weave in to stitches that already exist. So that's, that's what's nice when you actually have stitches of, available. Um, that's been a little weird on this particular piece because I've been doing all these satin stitch separately. If I would have done this outline first, I could have woven into the backs of those stitches and then done these satin stitches, but I wanted to do the satin stitch first. All right, here we go. Back in business. Am I using thread or floss? So it's embroidery floss. I, I Sometimes I just say thread out of habit, um, but it is, it's six strand embroidery floss. It's actually our own, we have our own brand of of embroidery floss called uh, pocket skeins. And uh, they're about half the size of, half the length of uh, your typical um, embroidery floss skein, uh, which makes them nice for little projects like this. Uh, so it's like four meters instead of uh, the normal eight, uh, but it's six strand embroidery floss. And I am splitting those strands into the number of strands that I want to work with. Uh, the different number of strands can give you like a different thickness of line. And let me get my little guide out again. I, I love them. I love um, sharing this guy. Oh gosh, I'm making a huge mess over here though. Ugh. Okay. I have a, uh, here's my little floss thickness guide. Uh, so uh, this is one strand of floss. This is the back stitch using one strand of floss. And then down here, this is using all six strands that come with it. Uh, I'm doing two strands for the satin stitch just so I can use that railroad technique, but my back stitches along um, the rest of it, the outline are three strands. So you can just see, like if I, if I cross out all these, you can just see like pulling a different number of strands gives you a different thickness of line. So it's another kind of design decision that you can have uh, with embroidery. Like for example, this is six strands up here and then thickness guide right underneath is, is just one. So quite a bit of a different look. So you can play with that within, within an, an embroidered piece. And uh, six strand embroidery floss, which is your normal embroidery floss, uh, is made to easily separate the threads. What are the ones on the bottom? Like the, the thread that I'm using now, it's, it's still the six strand embroidery floss. I've just pulled two strands out of the six. And we're doing that satin stitch with it. Oh, Butterfly Dreamer says, I rarely use more than three because my needle never goes through the fabric with any more totally agreed so that's that's the tough thing about um if you want like a thick line like a thick uh six strand line um it's hard to pull it first of all it's hard to thread six strands through your needle because that's a lot of strands and it's sometimes hard to pull that thread through your fabric i that and that's why i like using like a muslin fabric like just um I don't know, like a little wider weave uh, muslin fabric, which is what I'm using now because it it does have slightly a slightly bigger weave than you know a tight uh, like quilting weight nice cotton fabric. Um, so if I wanted to, I could pull six strands through here um, easier. 
Uh, typically, I'm going to just travel down these back stitches to get down here. But typically, if I want a thicker line, I mean, if I did want to stitch with six strands, what um, if you're if you're wanting to do that and you're having trouble, you could actually double up three strands because then you're only threading like you're you're threading three strands and then folding it in half to make six. So that's a little bit easier to pull through um, pull through fabric than threading six and then then trying to pull that through. Ooh, that's a little crooked. Oh well, we're going with it. Um, but yeah, otherwise the other thing I like doing if I want a little thicker line and it's too annoying to pull through the, the fabric, I'll just use a different stitch. Um, like for example, so our <laughs> this is our embroidery of the month for this month. Uh, these lines, these, um, these uh, Oh my God, leaves, <laughs> stems and leaves are a little bit thicker than um, here where we have a back stitch because I've used a stem stitch. So a slightly different stitch will give you a different thickness to a stem stitch. You're basically laying two stitches next to each other. So that that gives the appearance of a fatter, a fatter stitch. Oh, you double it as a habit. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. Oh, you need it. Yes, yeah, so that's our embroidery of the month. The lilacs is our, gosh, we just, it's like the second or the third or something today. Oh, it's the third already. Um, so we, we released that a couple days ago. Uh, we'll be stitching that two weeks from now. So next week is the jellyfish, and then then we'll be stitching the, um, the lilac. We'll be stitching um, um, this guy live. So we have kits and stuff for that. Uh, over my profile, there's links to that as well. Oh, and speaking of, I uh, haven't really mentioned this a lot tonight, but um, if you order uh, $20 or more in the shop uh, during this live, which will go on for another um, 10 minutes or so, um, I will throw in a free mystery gift. So $20 or more in the shop during the live, and I will throw in a free mystery gift. No... No code needed. I will just check, you know, who ordered during this time and, and throw in throw in a, a mystery gift. All right, and I am not getting these lines very parallel. <laughs> After, like, working so hard with the rest of this piece to get these all parallel, this bottom one's a little wonky. I'm kind of just trying to get it done. I don't think I need another line there. This is funny. I've never stitched. I've never stitched um, this design with these big satin stitches at the bottom. They look kind of funny to me, but it is getting done faster, so I do like that. Boop. Man, cutting has the sound effect tonight. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is for that. All right. There we are. Let's try and I have one more piece of um, that two uh, two strands left from that original piece that I cut. I'm not quite sure I can get this whole thing with that, but but let's give it a go. So I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with an away knot again because I don't have any stitches to weave into the backs. Um, and then we'll do long stitches here. Yeah, long stitches here, and then I'll come up to the top, and I think I'll keep this this like the same direction, or maybe maybe I'll switch it. I don't know. I don't know what I'll do yet. We'll do the bottom first though, and the long stitches. Okay, away knot. So I need to tie a little knot at the end. Again, this is just to reserve a little piece of thread that I can weave in later. So let's just you can hang out over here. So there, hopefully. Hopefully I have enough thread yet still with that. Okay, so that, that again reserves my floss for later. So it's, it's just going to hang out there, and I'll snip it and weave it in later when we're done. And let's do that railroad method so we can get these stitches laying nice next to each other too.
Oh, Amy says, turn it sideways, we'll be fine. Yeah, uh, with the satin stitches, because I, I don't know, I feel more comfortable going vertical with my satin stitches, apparently. Going sideways. I think it was just hard for me to, to see where I was ending up. So I was just kind of guessing at where I was putting my needle in at the end. Yep. Oh my gosh, you guys. I cannot believe that I'm basically going to finish this today. I thought for sure we'd go another day. And actually, we might still, because I do want to do that whipped back stitch. But I might just stay and do that. Get that done. Um, it's 9.20 here right now. And I, I usually go for about an hour. So I got 10 minutes left. But... I might try and squeeze in that whipped back stitch. I want to do the. I have a, just a plain back stitch now, but I want to change it into a whipped back stitch, which is a really easy and fun technique. Um, it adds a whole different dimension to the back stitch. I, I think it makes it not even look like a back stitch anymore. I think it makes it look like baker's twine. I keep saying kitchen twine, but it's called baker's twine, isn't it? I think so. Gosh, because, like, yeah, this letter I is going to get done real quick. Yay! And, yeah, gosh, we might even do the the uh, whipped backstitch and be done on time. Yeah, that's unexpected <laughs> for sure. All right, I think that's all I'm going to do there. And I'm going to just jump up. I think we're going to go, let's go horizontal for this letter I. So I'm going to go, like, I'm still going vertical, but ultimately it'll be horizontal. So uh, then it'll kind of match these. So I am jumping up right to there. I'm going to let there be like a little, a little jump. I'm not that picky. All right. So I'm going to, I, for circles, I kind of like starting in the middle and we'll go directly across. I, I started a little off the center, but, um, and then I'll fill in one side and then go to the other side. That kind of splits up the work a little bit. Ooh, I hope I have enough thread for this too. Oh, have a lovely, lovely um, evening, Butterfly. And like I said, I'm, I'm here uh, Monday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Central. So if you want to hop in on Monday again, I will be here. Have a nice night. Amy says, I love the mixed colors whip that we did. We have that Butterfly embroidery kit um, that was an embroidery of the month last year that we did a whip backstitch with two different colors. I think we did black and blue together. And then we also did like that bright pink, like this, this color pink. I think we did this pink and this orange together and ooh, that was pretty. So yeah, I think I wanna do the dark green with, with this light green. I know it's a little bit more subtle than than what it could be, but I think it's just going to add, it's just going to make it a hair darker, that outline. And it'll be like really subtle, but cute still, I think. I guess I, what I'm saying is I don't want to take away from, like, to me this piece is all about the satin stitch, uh, the like pretty rainbow satin stitch, so I don't want to take away from that with like, like a contrasting color. Like I don't want to do pink with the, with the um, green. I think that would just take take the focus away from the satin stitch but I think a dark green would be cool because I do like I do like when the colors change in the whipped back stitch and if this is all confusing it'll make sense in a few seconds when I um I think I got one more stitch on this satin stitch and I had enough floss which is great I was afraid I wasn't gonna have enough but there we go looking cute let's weave in those ends how did i learn to do embroidery um tweety's asking um well originally like i feel like i don't know the first time i learned embroidery exactly but i know when i learned cross stitch which i consider a form of embroidery um i learned cross stitch first and i remember a babysitter i had to be like I don't know what age needs a babysitter. I was little, um, but I, she brought over a cross stitch and I was like enthralled by the cross stitch. <laughs> and uh, uh, like, I think I, I was just like watching her all night, like go from nothing on the page or on the fabric to, to like 
something with all those little X's. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. Uh, and then, then I got like, you know, probably Christmas ornament kits since that's all that used to exist as far as cross stitch at, at the store. Um, so I'm sure I got some tiny cross stitches after that. And, and, um, you know, did cross stitches there. So basically from watching the babysitter <laughs> is how I learned. And uh, I don't like, I don't have a clear memory of how that crossed over into like all these sort of stitches. Ugh, I'm trying to thread this needle. I accidentally pulled it out. Eh, fine. I'll make the end nice, trim the nice, trim the ends nice. So it's easier to thread. But yeah, so in my head, it's from uh, from watching the babysitter. Ugh, I think I'm gonna go in one more time. I don't trust those stitches I just did. Oh, and I pulled it off again. There we are. Okay, and I think there is just enough time to do the whipped backstitch, but ugh, it is looking freaking cute right now. I do actually like these really big stitches for the satin stitch. Like, look how shiny they are. That is just fun. And it just kind of mimics the big satin stitches we did for this. So I, I like how that turned out. Um, normally I would have gone the short way on all of them, um, but I do like this long, the long version of that. All right, let's get some green. I don't think I have enough left in my cloud of scraps here. Well, actually, this isn't bad. How many strands is in this here? Three. Theoretically, I need it long enough to go around this whole piece and this isn't quite there. So I might just, I think I'm just gonna get a fresh piece cause why not? I'll use it later in, in these um, alphabet embroideries. So I'm just gonna get my normal like 24 inches or so. That should be enough. So you can use the same number of um, strands for the whip. I think I am. So I'm gonna use three strands for that. So I'm just gonna pull, pull my three strands. You gotta do it one at a time when you, when you use this method. This is that like where you kind of pinch the end and you, I bop the end just so I can isolate the threads. So this is our six strand embroidery floss and now I'm pulling on um, this number of strands that I need. So I'm going to just pull one and let it bunch up behind. And the moment the um, you pull it all the way out, it'll just release. You can just run your hand through there and uh, um, it's, it's good to go. No knots, no nothing. And it's just a really fast way of separating threads where it doesn't get all twisted up and crazy. All right, and I put the threads together, just run my hand through it and we good. Okay, whipped back stitch. I think, why don't we, uh, I think I'm gonna start at, um, well, I'm gonna weave in the back. So I'm not gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna weave in stitches that are there, but I think I'm gonna start, let's start like right here and then we'll go this direction. See how that goes. Okay, so let's weave in the backs of the stitches. I am so impressed that we're getting this all completely done today. I mean, it is, it is, uh, it's like 9.30 now, but I'm gonna stay till, till uh, we got this whipped back stitch. Okay, so weaving in my ends three times and we got like some ends were a little long, so I'm gonna trim those. Just cause I'm being, it's late, so I'm getting pickier. There we go. Okay, for a whipped back stitch, I'm gonna come up kind of in the middle of one of the stitches and I'm coming out on, um, I'm gonna go from the outside to the inside. So I'm coming on the inside of my, my worm shape here, like so. So I'm on the inside right here. And now I'm gonna go to the outside 
and I'm going to go from outside to inside. I'm going to go under the next stitch. So I'm just like, I'm not even going to the back of the fabric. I'm literally going just gliding underneath the next stitch from the outside to the inside of my shape. I'm always going to go outside to inside, but see, it makes a little, a little dark green stitch there. All right, I'm going to go to the next one from the outside to the inside. The sand stitches are a little bit in my way, but that's fine. So this is the whipped back stitch. We're doing the whip part. So outside to inside. And like I said, it's a little annoying with the satin stitches there, but we'll get it. There we go. And you can see it kind of makes, it almost looks like Baker's twine. It, it stops looking like a, uh, like a back stitch altogether. I think, I think it just doesn't even resemble a back stitch anymore, which is crazy. Uh, and there now without the without the um, satin stitch in the way I can go pretty quickly. So we're just going outside to inside around each stitch, like we're whipping whipping around each stitch. Move it out of our way. Oops, to the back. I just want to stay on the front. I'm gonna just keep rotating. But there we have this. It looks like almost like a little string sitting on top of the the piece, which I think is just so cool looking. So it won't even look like we used um, used backstitch in this piece, except for except for um, like the mouth and the eyes, I suppose. But yeah, so we're just gonna go around the whole piece like this. And that's our whipped backstitch. So again, you start with a backstitch, a normal plain old backstitch, and we could have stopped there. Oh gosh, I keep hitting the phone, sorry. Um, but we're going back and adding that extra little whip to it. Oh my gosh, it looks so cute. I love doing it with a different color. I know this is like subtly a different color, but up close, I mean, you can definitely tell. It looks like we, we've like made our own yarn that's got two different, made from like two different colors. Ugh, what do we got here? There we go. But look how cute. So cute. All right, this is a good suggestion. Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, Anne, did you suggest this? I think Anne suggested this over on YouTube uh, a couple nights ago. All right, I'm just trying to see all these stitches. Sometimes my thread's in the way. So I'm just shushing it out of the way. My stitches are a little smaller here, but that's fine. It still works. I just keep rotating uh, so it's just most comfortable to hold. All right, now I got got the satin stitch in, away, in the way again, so we'll go slower on this part here. Hopefully I have enough thread. If not, I can just get some more. And thanks everyone for the follows and hearts and likes and all that tonight. I appreciate it a ton. Um, and like I said, I'm here at 8.30 p.m. Central Time uh, for about an hour Monday through Friday. So uh, I won't be here tomorrow or Sunday, but I'll be back again back again on Monday and we'll be starting the letter J, which is the jellyfish, one of my favorites from the alphabet. Then the week after that, we'll be working on our embroidery of the month, which is that uh, cute little lilac feller with, uh, with the squirrel. It still smells like lilacs outside, but they all kind of blew down or fried themselves over the past weekend when, when I was gone. So that was a bummer. Oh, uh, T.S. Alas. <laughs> I know, I know I'm getting that wrong, but thanks so much for the share. All right, we're getting there. Actually, we're only about like halfway done with, with this. Um, so I know it's after 9.30. I typically only go to 9.30, but I'm going until this guy's done. We're, we're getting there. Uh, so I will, you know, the, um, the 
are like special for tonight will still go till I'm I'm done here. So it will go past 9:30. Uh, so oh, yeah, I'm getting that satin stitch in there. And that deal again is order uh, twenty dollars or more from the shop, and I will throw in a free mystery gift. You don't need any um, any code. I'm just gonna look at who ordered during this time, and I'll I'll toss one in for you. Oh, Wanda says this is really pretty. Oh, thanks so much. I am just I'm I'm loving like all these extra things we're doing to these. So we're we're taking. We're working off my original designs that I drew like 10 years ago. <laughs> uh, my original like ABC patterns. Uh, but we're, we're playing around with them. We're, we're being a little extra with them sometimes, especially with, like with this whipped back stitch. You know, we're playing with stitches, testing out colors, other fun colors, other fun ways of stitching. And it's just been really fun so far. And we're only on letter I. Okay. This is totally changing the look of it though, don't you think? Like, first of all, the line's much darker. Uh, here's, here's the part that we didn't do yet. But doesn't it look like a completely different stitch? I just feel like it looks like Baker's twine just sitting on top of the surface uh, versus the back stitch, which is what it started out as. It's just so fun. It's definitely a newish uh, favorite for me. New Newish to me. I never really... Okay. Got to get past this sand stitch again. I never really used this a lot. And then we, it came up once and uh, then we played around with it. And now I'm just loving it. It is, I think the reason I don't do it often is because it's like, oh God, it's a whole nother step to like go back and whip all those back stitches. But ugh, it's always so cute. I might need more floss still. Oh, well. Purple satin stitches. That was painless. All right, let's get around his little tail, his little butt, I suppose. And yeah, we got his whole underbelly though yet to go. And I am thinking we are gonna need like a, the teensiest bit of thread, and we're a little twisty here too. Ugh, that's going to be annoying if I lose thread chicken tonight. That's going to be super annoying. Oh, have a great evening, Nora. Thanks again for coming in. Did you finish the project of tatting the different snowflakes? I sure didn't, Marielle, <laughs> but I'm, I'm itching to do it again. I think I have like six of them done now. I have to hang up three of them on my wall. Um, but I'm, I'm really itching to do some more tatting. My mom was tatting all weekend and I didn't bring my tatting stuff with and I wish I, I wish I did. So I'm, I'm wanting to do it again. So nope, I did not. Uh, what's keeping me is I have to look up how to do something for the next couple. And I just like haven't opened YouTube for that basically. So that's what's been holding me back <laughs> and I've been crocheting and um, working on uh, just some other projects so uh, but it's, it's boiling to the top again I, I do want to it's like I'm itching to to work on some tatting again for sure what's tatting Ooh, so tatting is like a form of lace making I'll show you one of the the snowflakes so like here's here's one of the snowflakes that I am tatting and uh, it's basically almost like a form of macrame. Uh, let me see if I have, I don't know what I did with my, oh here it is. So here's my little, this is tatted too. Uh, you actually make it, there's a couple ways to do it, but you make it with like these fun shuttles. So you might have seen these in like, you know, hidden in like grandma's bin of like weird sewing notions, but you actually use these or a couple of these to uh, make this sort of lace. So this is, it's basically tatted lace. Um, not to be confused with like crocheted lace, <laughs> which I happen to have. 
nearby too for a project but this is it looks very similar but it's a completely different construction so uh, this uses those uh, shuttles those tatting shuttles that i just showed um and now i threw one. oh like yeah these guys and uh this is uh uses a crochet hook so here's that crochet hook with the handle and i i bent my poor little hook i'm so sad that was like my grandma's crochet hook and i just did something stupid i just I just squished it on the ground and, and bent it. I, I do have one more of hers. I actually already broke one um, crochet hook of my grandma's. It, I, didn't, I don't even really know how I broke it. I think it just got used up, basically. It was a plastic one, and uh, um, I used it a ton. And then one day it just was like, meh, I'm done, and it broke. So I've broken two of her crochet hooks but I have one left and I figured it's better to use them and break them than never have used them do I ever show those like do I ever show like how to tat um we we've done uh, uh, like a couple months ago we were heavily into tatting land because I had just kind of learned how to do it a little bit um so I do have a bunch of, of TikTok videos with tatting they're, they're not all organized yet because I didn't have I wasn't able to do that at the time yet organize my um like I didn't have playlists yet um but I'm working on organizing it but I have a pinned post of how to do um some of the basics of tatting uh but yeah we'll definitely do more tatting again for sure oh my gosh I think we're gonna win thread chicken yay um, but yeah, so, uh, the last weeks or the last couple weeks of the month, um, is kind of our open week where we just do like a, whatever project we want. And I'm kind of itching to do some more tatting. So at the, at the end of the month, we'll, we'll do some more tatting. Uh, oh, okay. But Monday through Friday. Yep. Monday through Friday, 8.30 PM central, typically 8.30 to 9.30, uh, central. Although, you know, we're going over tonight. All right, so I've gone all the way around. I have tons of thread left, so I did not need to worry. And my last stitch, I'm just going to go behind in the center of the first stitch. So it's looking like, it's looking as if my stitch wrapped around it. But we're going kind of right in the middle. So there we go. That's what it looks like. The cute little uh, whipped back stitch. Whipped back stitch there. Like I said, I think it just looks... I mean, you wouldn't even know it's a backstitch anymore. It looks completely different, I feel like. Uh, but so cute. All right, so let's weave in the end. And uh, dang, we are officially done with uh, the inchworm. Oops, shoot. I always do that when I have this length of thread left. Let's trim that. Try again here. Uh, but we are done with letter I. I 100% did not think we would get done with this today. Uh, I thought we'd still be working on the satin stitch of the letter I. And I definitely didn't think we'd get the this extra like whipped back stitch done, but I'm so happy. It's so nice to like end end the week with a finished project. Or I guess this is a portion of a finished project. We're gonna be making these all into a quilt eventually. Um, but there we go, so fun. All right, I love it. Yay! Okay, excellent. <laughs> like I said, was not expecting to get that done. So, all right, so next week, you guys, uh, Monday through Friday, although I'm pretty sure we'll be done a little early, uh, but we are going to be working on Jay, which is the jellyfish. Uh, like I said, this is one of my favorites. He's got all sorts of French knots, so we'll go over, um, we'll definitely go over the French knot, and uh, I'll do a little demo on that. Uh, I do a little demo on like the three things you might be doing wrong if you are having trouble with the French knot. So we'll go over those three things. I bet you you're doing at least one, maybe all of the three things uh, if you're having trouble with French knots. So we'll go over that and then we'll do all piles of French knots on that. So that's next week. And then the week after, uh, we'll be working on the embroidery of the month, which is our lilac pattern. Um, all of this is in our bio. Um, you can check that out uh, for quick links. And all right, so I think we'll pretty much end it there for the evening. Um, I will let our special go over a few minutes yet if you have something in the cart. So the special was um, 
purchase $20 or more from the shop uh, during this live or, you know, the few minutes after, and I will throw in a mystery gift for free, uh, no code necessary. I will just plop it in your order uh, as a thank you for joining me. I really appreciate hanging out with you guys. Uh, this is always uh, so fun for me. Um, and I always learn a lot from you guys. <laughs> That's what's so fun. And you always have wonderful suggestions. Like this whipped back stitch was a suggestion. Um, oh, from Anne, I think. Uh, but here we go. Looking all cute. And yeah, so we will work on that jellyfish next week. And I hope everyone has a fabulous, fabulous uh, weekend. Um, so I'll see you guys again at um, 8.30 p.m. Central Time on Monday. Have a nice evening. Good night.